Transit. How are we doing? Great. Hey, my name is Lauren. If it's your first time here, we're so glad that you're here with us today. We are wrapping up a series that we're calling Real Talk. But before we jump into that, uh, a few weeks ago, I was on a cruise with my family. Any cruisers in the room? People who love to cruise? Yes. Uh, I love to cruise. My family, we're big cruisers. Um, it works for our family. So we've been going on cruises for years now. And it's become over time, like I, I, just like everybody else, love to go on vacation, but I really love the planning part of a vacation. I love booking the reservations and making the itinerary, making sure everyone has a great time. I really enjoy that. So for years now, it's kind of become assumed that when my family goes on vacation, I do all the booking. And that's fine, and it's fun, but for cruising, it gets a little tricky because, I don't know if you know this, but 60 days out from when your cruise leaves is when all the reservations open up, but you have to be online at midnight. And as someone who likes to go to bed as early as possible, midnight is kind of tough. I gotta really stay up, and so I do all my research. I get everybody's you know, excursions that they want, reservations that they want, and I stay up till midnight, and I try to get as much as I can for us. Now this year, I got into everyone's excursions, I got all the things they wanna do, but there was one reservation at a restaurant that my family, we've always wanted to go to on this particular cruise, and we've never been able to get a reservation for. So of course, this time around, I'm like, I'm gonna try for it, I'll try to get it, and I got it. So I text my family right at midnight, I'm like, hey, I got this reservation, they're like, this is so awesome, this is exciting, how cool is this? The cruise comes, we're on the cruise a few weeks ago, and, as, you know, we're on vacation, they cancel some things, they change some things around, and that's fine, that's fine. I'm, I'm getting a little annoyed, but that's okay, it's okay. And then one day, I'm sitting by the pool, reading a book, drinking a coffee, enjoying my life, and a couple of my family members walk up, and I'm like, where have you been? They said, oh, we've been at guest services. And I was like, what were you doing at guest services? And they're like, oh, well, we, uh, we canceled that reservation. I was like, the one that was really hard to get that we haven't gotten for years that y'all really wanted? And they're like, yeah, that one. And I was like, why? And they said, oh, well, we, we just don't have enough time. And I'm like, we're on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean. We have all the time in the world. Like, what do you mean we don't have time? And they're, oh, well, we would rather do something else instead. And I felt in the moment, I was getting so frustrated and so annoyed. And so I walked away because if you don't have anything nice to say, you don't say anything at all. Yeah, or walk away. Uh, and so I leave and I find my mom and I'm just venting to her. I'm like, mom, I'm so annoyed. Like, I do all this work. I got all these reservations. They've been wanting this one for years. They've been complaining every time I don't get it and they cancel it. And then as I'm talking and as I'm getting just angry and angry, eventually I say, and they've never even said thank you. And I realized in that moment that the root of my problem, the thing that's really making me mad is that I feel like they're not grateful, that I've put in this work, that I've tried to make this cruise great, and I know that can be frustrating to some, but at the end of the day, I feel like I have gone above and beyond, and they haven't said thank you. And maybe you've been there before, where you have done something nice for someone, that you've gone out of your way to do something for them, and they didn't say thank you, and even though that wasn't your motivation, even though that's not why you did it so that you could hear thank you, you noticed when you don't hear it. Maybe you've been a part of a group project before and you end up doing all the work and the other people in the group project, they never said thank you. And you're like, well, I was gonna do the work anyway because I care about my grade and I wanted this to be great. But now that you, uh, now that you haven't said it, I notice that you haven't said it. And so maybe you've had those moments where you're like, I would really like to hear thank you and I'm not. And if you have felt that before, that doesn't make you a bad person. It's not a bad thing to want to hear thank you, to want to hear some gratitude. That's actually just a completely normal human thing because we all want to be acknowledged, we all want to feel seen, we want credit for our work, and so when we don't hear it, that can feel a little annoying, that can feel a little frustrating. The problem arises is when that becomes our motivation for doing something for someone is that we want that attention, that we want to hear thank you, and it causes us to be a little selfish. It causes us to not have the best motivations when it comes to helping others. That's when it can get messy. But if you just want to hear thank you every so often, it's not a bad thing. Because if we're being honest, it hurts when someone doesn't show gratitude. It hurts when someone doesn't tell us thank you. It hurts when someone doesn't recognize our work. And it can cause us to feel underappreciated or ignored or just not seen. And that can hurt our feelings. But the thing is that I often forget, and maybe you forget sometimes too, is that 
if I feel that way when I don't hear thank you, that means other people feel that way when I don't say thank you, when I don't express my gratitude for others, when I don't show my appreciation for them, then it might cause them to feel hurt as well. It might cause them to feel overlooked and ignored and not seen. And I think there's a few reasons why we forget or we just don't say thank you. Even though we know how it feels when we don't receive that, we still find ourselves not saying it to others. And I think there's some reasons why. I think for some of us, it feels weirdly vulnerable to walk up to someone and be like, thank you so much. Like, we just, we make it weird. Uh, it, we get awkward or it feels uncomfortable, and so we just don't say it. Or so many days or weeks goes by and we're like, well, they know I'm thankful. They don't. But we assume they do. We convince ourselves that they do, and there's no need to go back and actually say it. Or we just don't think it's a big deal. But the truth is, is that when we don't recognize the opportunities, opportunities we have to express our gratitude and we don't say anything, it hurts the people around us, and it hurts our relationships with them. But this idea of expressing gratitude isn't anything new. I mean, Paul, who was a leader of the early church, he talks about this in one of his letters that's in the New Testament. He was writing a letter to a group of believers, and he was talking about how they should act, how they should treat one another, how they should speak to each other. And we now know this letter as 1 Thessalonians, but this is what he says in chapter 5. He says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you, who call you out, who give you advice, who help you stay on track. And so all month long, we've been talking about the power of real conversations, of conversations that build other people up, that don't tear people down. And that's exactly what Paul is talking about here. He just gets really specific. And so Paul is saying, hey, if you want to encourage someone, if you want to build someone up, one of the best things you can do is acknowledge them, is recognize how they show up for you. Acknowledge their work, acknowledge their care. It is honoring to them to express your gratitude and appreciation. It is honoring to the people around you to say thank you. And we could think about all the people we come in contact with every day who help us, who show up for us. Your parents and guardians who put food on the table, who help you with your homework, who drive you where you want to go, who let you have friends over. Your teachers who help you learn and grow. Your friends who show up for you and who are there for you when you need them. Your small group leaders that, who have decided to spend three years of their lives walking with you through middle school. There are so many people in our lives who show up for us. And unfortunately, for some reason, we often forget to say thank you, to express our gratitude, to show them that we're grateful for them. And I don't really know why, because maybe you're like me, and when I go out to eat, for some reason I tell the waiter thank you minimum of 85 times. Like, it's just constant. They're like, they give me a little bit of water, thank you so much. They bring some, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Some butter, oh, this is amazing, thank you. I don't even know this person, but I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But when it comes to my friends and my family, People who love me, who care for me, who I love and care for, I forget all the time to simply say thank you. And so what I don't want us to do is I don't want us to underestimate the power of real gratitude. When we express real gratitude, when we take the opportunity to say thank you and we mean it, there is power in that because it helps the people around us. It makes them feel seen and cared for and that we acknowledge them and that we appreciate them. It helps us because I don't know about you, but I can get real selfish real fast. I can just be in my own little world and where everything revolves around me and I'm only thinking about me and what's in store for me and I need to look out for me and I forget to look up and look around and see the people who help me every single day. And so gratitude helps others, it helps us, and it helps strengthen our relationships with the people 
around us. And so I don't want us to be a group of people who misses out on the opportunity to experience the real power of gratitude. Our senior pastor, Andy Stanley, says this. He says, unexpressed gratitude feels like ingratitude to the ones for whom you are grateful. So the people in your life who you are grateful for, if you don't say thank you, if you don't express your gratitude, they don't know you're grateful for them. They can't read your mind. They don't know the impact that you believe they've had on your life. They don't know it unless you say it. And so if we walk around and we don't appreciate and acknowledge and recognize the people around us, they will never know how we feel. And so unless we say thank you, they will think we're not thankful. And so let's be people who make sure the people around us feel seen and recognized and know that we're thankful for them. And so we're going to give you a chance to do that today. In just a little bit, when you head to small group, the first part of small group will be a conversation around this and a discussion around gratitude and thankfulness. And I encourage you to lean in and to engage with the questions. But then the second part of small group, you're going to get to write a note. Just a short little note to someone in your life who you're thankful for. And so I want you to think of one person, and maybe multiple people come to mind, and that's awesome. But I want us to start with one person in our lives who we are thankful for, and they may not know it because we haven't said it at all, or we haven't said it recently. And I want us to think of that one person and write them just a short note, and it could be as simple as this, as thank you for doing something. This is a specific action that we're going to tell them. Thank you for helping me with my homework. Thank you for making me lunch today. Thank you for uh, driving me to that game, for showing up for me. Whatever it is, thank you for doing something. We're going to make it specific because I see it and I know it means you care. And so it can be as simple as this. But again, if we don't ever express our thankfulness, they will not think we're thankful. And so as we head into this week, this Thanksgiving holiday, I want us to look for opportunities where we can express our gratitude. And I want us to say it and mean it so that the people around us feel seen and know that they are appreciated and loved by us. So I'm going to pray for us, and then you're going to head to small group. Father, thank you so much for transit for this morning. God, I'm just so grateful for this place where we get to come every week and worship you and play games and laugh and be in community that points us to you. God, we're just so grateful. And Father, I pray as we walk through this uh, Thanksgiving week, God, when we see opportunities where we can thank the people around us, Father, will you just remind us the power in that? And will you give us the courage to say it? Give us the courage to express our gratitude so that we can honor the people around us. We can honor the people you have so graciously placed in our life. And so, Father, we're grateful for you. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.